Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, nice to be here. First of all, I would like to thank the um, GLEX organization for the invitation and also Anna Pires for being in this special, special issue or session integrated in the GLEX Summit. Well, we are going down to the earth and we are going to talk a little bit about Azores because the, the challenge that I got was to speak something about uh, Azores Islands and I I'm making some uh, questions. They are here, some of them. Why Azores Island exists? I could answer very easily. As uh, Halbert Einstein said about the formation of universe, God does not play dice. <laughs> so Azores Islands exist because God does not play dice. But this is just a philosophical answer. I will give you something more practical. And uh, besides why Azores exists, why they exist here in this uh, part of the Atlantic Ocean. So I put here some of the questions that usually the students uh, do in classes or some people do about the Azores, the why, the how, the when, and the which islands were formed, when, uh, at what stage. So I will try to answer to some of these questions. At least I will try to do it. But uh, I think that for uh, having good answers, we need to travel not to the space, but we need to travel in time. Because this is something that geologists do very often. I have a friend that say that uh, geologists, they can predict the past and sometimes they are wrong. So let's travel in time and see what, uh, what happens. So remember that uh, we are in the middle of the Atlantic, but uh, this is uh, a place that used to be a continental area more than 200 million years ago. So exactly when the Azores are, it was land, it was a continental area. So something happened in these last million of years that uh, allowed later that volcanoes start uh, forming the, the Azores island. So if the technology helps me, let's try to see a small uh, animation about the formation of the Atlantic Remember that the, the plates move, they got apart, and this is a small clip showing the evolution of the North Atlantic in the last 200 million years. And everything started uh, when the Central Atlantic starts moving. And you see here in this animation, the formation of what it was called the Iapetos Ocean, something about 200 million years ago. And uh, I think that you recognize some places. So this is Florida area. This will be the, Penin the Iberian Peninsula. At this time, everything was a little bit cloudy. We don't see very easily some uh, continents, even some uh, uh, countries. We start seeing here the South America and the Africa. That's about 100 million years ago. They also start separating. And this is a little bit uh, later on. And the Azores do not exist at this time, not even uh, a proto island. Everything was just uh, a, a deep ocean. And you see here, 100 million years ago, you see the, the Southern Atlantic start being, being formed. And it was only about uh, 600, um, 60 million years ago that the Labrador Sea starts opening and making the the North Atlantic area of the, of, the, of the Atlantic Ocean. So only 30 to 35 million years ago, something happened here. And you start seeing in this part of the ocean, something is growing and growing and growing. See, 20 million years ago. And this place here would be later on the place where you are and where I am, Azores Island. So it was needed a lot of time before the islands got conditions to be formed. And what conditions were that? First of all, the opening of the Atlantic Ocean, but not only that, something else was needed. What was needed was this. The velocity of the spreading of, along the mid-Atlantic reach, something like 35 million years ago changed and it, it becomes higher north of Azores, then south. 
is, it means that a part of the ocean was spreading faster than the other, and the oceanic crust could not resist the, to this differential movement, and it broke, it fractured, and by breaking, allowed the magma that was deep in the oceanic crust to arise to the surface and form the Azores Island. So, why the Azores Island were formed? Because the oceanic crust broken, got fractured. What was the reason for that? This difference in the velocities. I have here the values. The spreading velocity north of Azores is about 23 millimeters per year, and south of Azores is 20 millimeters per year. So these velocities is more or less the velocity that our nails grow. And this makes the difference, this three millimeters is enough, millions of years after millions of years to broke the oceanic crust. And then we arrive to what is the, the deep ocean presently. And we see here this triangular area, which we call the Azores Plateau, which is the place that start being formed, as I pointed out some 35 million years ago, allowing the islands later on to, um, to form. So, 35 million years ago, something happened at the deep ocean, and that was the coming of the magma to the Earth's surface. But remember that at that time, Earth's surface means deep ocean. So the volcanic activity was only like this, what we call pillow lavas. So for many millions of years, the only volcanic activity that we had in Azores was this, was uh, submarine volcanic uh, lava flows uh, flowing at the deep ocean with no uh, extra products, or at least very important products, and only the accumulation, the piling up of these lava flows, first 4,000 meters uh, deep, then 3,000 meters deep, that allow the growing of uh, a sea mount, and then the formation of the Azores Island. Of course, this took many million years to build this um, submarine volcano, what we call a sea mount, that all of the Azores Island are, uh, are based, or at least are uh, supported. So, for many years, that was the landscape here. Just sea and space, no earth, because the fire was deep down in the water. So we had to wait for about 30 million years for the first superficial activity started. And they, it started more or less like this. Just this is the this is a picture of Capellinus eruption in 1957 here in Azores. So the islands of Azores they started all of them. They started like this, with uh, shallow sea water submarine activity, what we call Sertzean or Capellinian type eruptions, with these clouds, with these ashes, with these columns. And I have here a very uh, small um, video about the initial phases of uh, Capellinus eruption. This, this gives you an idea what was the process for the formation of the Azores Island. All of them started like this, with small islets that were connected between them, eruption after the eruption, in the first stage, these eruptions were, were uh, with a connection between the magma and the water. And magma and water, they are not very friendly each other because a magma is very hot and water is cold. So there is a, a, a re reaction among them which give rise to these very explosive eruptions that we call the Sertzean type eruptions, as you see here in Kaplingj with this uh, clouds, these whitish clouds is mostly seawater vaporized, but you also see very easily here the ashes, the bombs, and the, all the, the magma that is expelled from the volcano. Sometimes these uh, material, these products are not so fine. They can reach some uh, centimeters in size, and then we call bombs, as we see here, 
the, the bombs falling from the, the clouds and reaching the, the sea. So now we can answer to the full question, when did the Azores form? Well, they, they start formed, as I told you before, something like 35 million years ago in the deep ocean, but the first activity near the surface happened here in Santa Maria Island, something like six million years ago, because Santa Maria is the older island of the Azores, and the older part of the older island is here. It is called Baía dos Cabrestantes. So if you want to touch, to see, to smell, to heat, not very good, the older formations, geological formations of Azores, you must go there to Santa Maria and visit this place, Baía dos Cabrestantes, where you see a deposit that is very similar than the one in Capelinhos. The difference is that Capelinhos is 60 years, and this one is six million years old. But it's the same kind of deposit, same kind of material formed in different stages. So, in conclusion, I have here some profiles, not very sophisticated, done by an, an academic, of Santa Maria Island. You see that the island is just the small part, it's the small peak of a huge sea mount. This is true for Santa Maria, but also for all the other islands of Azores. And you see that it was needed a lot of time, something like 30 million years, to build this seamount that later allowed the formation of the aerial part of the island. And this story that I'm telling here for Santa Maria can be told to all the other nine islands. So, Santa Maria was the first one to be formed. Then we have São Miguel, then we have Terceira and all the other islands. And the last one, our baby, in terms of uh, geological age, is Pico Island, which is only less than 300,000 years. So while Santa Maria is our grandmother, Pico is our baby. He just is uh, not still in the kindergarten. He's just uh, start crawling on the floor. That's why you go to peak and you see all these uh, volcanic phenomena. They seem that occurred yesterday. They are so fresh. You can close your eyes and see the lava flowing yeah, at the ground. Okay, so conclusions, because I have uh, only five minutes. All the Azores Islands are volcanic in origin, including Santa Maria. Even in Santa Maria, you have very nice fossils, very nice sedimentary deposits. All the islands are oceanic islands. This means they, they start forming at the bottom of the sea and then they grew, as I explained. And all these islands are located in a special place of the Atlantic Ocean that the, the geologists call the Azores Triple Junction because it's a, a, the place where these three plates, the Eurasian, the North American, and the African plates, they meet together. This is a very complex area. This is uh, my idea of this area. There are other ideas, of course. This is a very complex area. You see this shadow, this uh, cross the line means that this is a nobody's land. It's not Eurasian plate, it's not African plate, it's not North American, American plate. Some people call it the Azores microplate. Some people call it the Azores block. Some people call it the Azores mini block. I used to say, forget the name. It's a special place. <laughs> and you are in this special place now. So, final statement. I tried to give you in 12 minutes a very short uh, story about the formation of the Azores Island. Well, this is my story, of course. There are others. But remember, this is, as I say here, an unfinished story because in Azores we have 16 active volcanic systems. It means that they are dormant, they are sleeping, but when you are sleeping, you expect to wake up in the next morning. So the same for our 16 active volcanoes. They will wake up. Luckily, all of them are monitorized. It means that they are with equipments that allows to detect any significant change that can be used as a warning system. 
This is very crucial because this is habitated islands, there are people living. So, before I finish, I have something to tell you on my demand and on Anna Peter's demand. We are always trying to do things, new things, and this is what we are planning to do next winter. The Azores Caving Analog Mission, Camões in Portuguese. Camões is a, a very important Portuguese poet. That's why Ana Pires wrote Azores Camões Mission. Well, the idea is to use our volcanic caves, and we have in Azores about 300 volcanic caves, most of them in Pico Island, but, but also here in, in Tercera. And with the help of these guys, os montanhês, they are our, our cavers. So they spend a lot of time underground, like the Beatles. So with the support of Montanheiros, we will try to promote this uh, mission this winter, trying to make what these missions are about, to create uh, a field, an environment that allow people to try new things on, a new, on new conditions, in this case, using our uh, volcanic cave. So if you are for somehow interested in the issue, please talk with us, talk with Anna, talk with me, and maybe we meet next uh, month, in a couple of months. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Professor Nunes. Thank you very much. Indeed, it was the traveling in time. Yeah. I actually, I agreed to be on this analog before I heard about the volcanic uh, possibility. So, what? I, w I agreed to be on this analog before I heard about your uh, volcanic possibilities. So. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much okay. for sharing your information. Uh, we have time for one question. Yeah. So if anyone has a question for Professor Nunez. An easy one, please. I see ah, yes, someone please. here. Yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, Mark Skinner from the uh, United States, Hawaii and uh, Washington, D.C. Are there any of the islands that have eroded and are no longer above the surface? Or is this all that you've got, the ones that you count now? I'm sorry, I did not understand because of Are the there any of the Azores that were created but have since eroded from wind and, and water and are no longer above the surface of the water? Or yes. what you see is what you get? Yes, no, there are many seamounts around the islands. And some of them, at least one of them, we know that they were an island in 1720, so in the 18th century. There was an eruption between Tercera and San Miguel. And that uh, eruption occurred in a bank called Banco Dom Juan de Castro. That eruption formed a, a new island. It was called Ilha Nova, New Island, and it stands for about two years. And afterwards, due to the sea erosion, it was completely destroyed. So what you, yeah, you have today, it's a seamount that is 11 meters below surface with a crater, a whole volcano, with a very impressive fumarolic field. This is one of the best places for diving in the Azores because it has a very impressive submarine hydrothermal field. Uh, so this is the remnants of this island from during the 1720 eruption. And for sure, many others have occurred in the past that before the Portuguese arrived here, they were not, were not detected, for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Professor. Uh